Contamination Crew by Alan Norse. Orders were orders. The creature had to be killed. But just how does one destroy the indestructible? The following is taken from the files of the Medical Disciplinary Board, Hospital Earth, from the preliminary hearings in R.E. Profession versus Samuel B. Jenkins, Physician, First Court of Medical Affairs, Final Action Pending, Com, C.O.D. S. Two Two One V.B. Seventy Three, Vorotchislav Sector, Fourth Galactic Period, Twenty Two Twenty Three Forty One, General Survey Ship Mercy to Hospital Earth, Via. Fast as possible routing, priority unassigned. 2. Lucius Darby, Physician Grade 1, Black Service Director of the Galactic Periphery Services, Hospital Earth. From Samuel B. Jenkins, Physician Grade 6, Red Service General Practice Patrol Ship, Lancet. Attached to GSS Mercy Pro Tem. Sir, the following communication is directed to your attention in hopes that it may anticipate various charges which are certain to be placed against me as a physician of the Red Service upon the return from the General Survey Ship Mercy to Hospital Earth, expected arrival four months from above date. These charges will undoubtedly be preferred by one Tuvold Nielsen, physician grade two of the Black Service and commander of the Mercy on its current survey mission for Ochisilov sector. Exactly what the charges will be I cannot say, since the black doctor in question refuses either audience or communication with me at the present time. However, it seems likely that treason, incompetence, and mutinous insubordination will be among the milder complaints registered. It is possible that even malpractice might be added, so you can readily understand the reasons for this statement. The following will also clarify my attached request that the GSS Mercy upon arrival in orbit round Hospital Earth, be met immediately by a decontamination ship carrying a vat of hydrochloric acid, concentration 3.7%, measuring no less than 20 by 30 by 50 feet, and that that quarantine officials be prepared to place the entire crew of the Mercy under physical and psychiatric observation for a period of no less than six weeks upon disembarkation. The facts in brief are as follows. Three months ago, as the crew of the General Practice Patrol Ship Lancet, my colleague Green Dr. Wallace Stone and myself began investigating certain peculiar conditions existing on the fourth planet of Malki, Vorotchislav Sector, Class I Medical Service Contract. The entire population of that planet was found to be suffering from a mass psychotic delusion of rather spectacular proportions, namely, that they and their entire planet were in inimminent danger of being devoured, in toto, by an indestructible non-humanoid creature which they called a Lorg. The Malkivi were insistent that a Lorg had already totally consumed a non-existent outer planet in their system, and was now hard at work on neighboring Malki V. It was their morbid fear that Malki IV was next on the list. No amount of reassurance could convince them of the foolishness of these fears, although we exhausted our energy, our patience, and our food and medical supplies in the effort. Ultimately, we referred the matter to the Gray Service, feeling confident that it was a psychiatric problem rather than medical or surgical. We applied to the GSS Mercy to take us aboard and to replenish our ship's supplies, and provide us a much-needed recovery period. The black doctor in command approved our request and brought us aboard. The trouble began two days later. There were three classes of dirty words in use by the men who traveled the spaceways back and forth from Hospital Earth. There were the words you seldom used in public, but they were colorful and descriptive in private use. Then there were the words which you seldom used even in private, but which effectively relieved feelings when directed at mirrors, inanimate objects, and people who had just left the room. Finally, there were the words that you just didn't use, period. You knew they existed. You'd heard them used at one time or another. But to hear them spoken out in plain Earth English was enough to rock the most space-hardened of the galactic pill peddlers back on his well-worn heels. Black Doctor, Turvold Nielsen, Earth English, was spotty at best. But the word came through without any possibility of misinterpretation. Red Dr. Sam Jenkins stared at the little man and felt his face turning as scarlet as the lining of his uniform cape. But that's ridiculous, he finally stammered, quite aside from the language you used to suggest it. Ah, so the word still has some punch left, eh? At least you puppies bring something away from your medical training, even if it's only taboos. 
the black doctor scowled across the desk at jenkins lanky figure but sometimes my good doctor it's better to face a fact than to wait for the fact to face you sometimes we have to crawl out of our ivory towers for a minute or two you know jenkins reddened again he had never had any great love for the physicians of the black service who did but he found himself disliking this short blunt-spoken man even more cordially than most why implicate the lancet he burst out you've landed the mercy on plenty of planets before we brought the lancet aboard her but we didn't have it with us before the lancet came aboard and we do have it now the implication is obvious you've brought aboard a containment he'd said it again red dr jenkins face darkened the green doctor and i have maintained the lancet in perfect conformity with the sterility code we've taken every precaution on both landing and disembarking procedures what's more we've spent the last six months on a planet with no mutually compatible flora or fauna from hospital earth viewpoint Malky four is sterile we made only the briefest check stop on Malky five before joining you it was a barren rock but we decontaminated it again after leaving if you have a containment on board your ship sir it didn't come from the lancet and i won't be held responsible it was strong language to use to a black doctor and sam jenkins knew it there were doctors of the green and red services who had spent their professional lives on some godforsaken planetoid at the age of the galaxy for saying less red doctor sam jenkins was too near the end of his internship too nearly ready for his first permanent planetary appointment with the rank honor and responsibility it carried to lightly risk throwing it into the wind at this stage but a red doctor does not bring a containment aboard a survey ship he thought doggedly no matter what the black doctor says nielsen looked at the young man slowly then he shrugged of course i'm merely a pathologist i realize that we know nothing of medicine nor of disease nor of the manner in which disease is spread all this is beyond our scope but perhaps you'll permit one simple question from a dull old man just to humor him jenkins looked at the floor i'm sorry sir just so you've had a very successful cruise this year with the lancet i understand jenkins nodded a most successful cruise four planets elevated from class four to class two contracts they tell me morale elevated from class five to class one with certain special riders a plague panic averted on setman one and a very complex virus bacteria symbosis unraveled on orb three an illustrious record you and your colleagues from the green service are hoping for a year's exemption from training i imagine the black doctor looked up sharply you searched your holds after leaving the malky planets i presume jenkins blinked why no sir that is we contaminated according to i see you didn't search your holds i suppose you didn't notice your food supplies dwindling at an alarming rate no the red doctor hesitated not really ah the black doctor raised his eyes wearily and flipped an activator switch the scanner on the far wall buzzed into activity it focused on the rear storage hold of the mercy where the little lancet was resting on its landing rack look closely doctor at first jenkins saw nothing then his eye caught a long pink glistening strand laying across the floor of the hold the scanner picked up the strand followed it to the place where it emerged from a neat pencil-sized hole in the hull of the lancet the strand snaked completely across the room and disappeared through another neat hole in the wall next to the storage hold jenkins shook his head as the scanner flipped back to the hole in the lancet's hull even as he watched the hole enlarged and a pink blob began to emerge the blob kept coming and coming until it rested soggily on the edge of the hole then it teetered and fell splat on the floor friends of yours the black doctor asked casually it was a pink heap of jelly just big enough to fill a scrub bucket it sat on the floor quivering noxiously then it sent out pseudopods in several directions probing the metal floor after a few moments it began oozing along the strand of itself that lay on the floor and squeezed through the hole into the next hold ah said sam jenkins feeling suddenly sick the hydrophonic tanks are in there the black doctor said you've seen one of those before not in person jenkins shook his head weakly only pictures it's a lord we thought it was only a malkivi persecution fantasy this thing is growing pretty fast for a persecution fantasy we spotted it eight hours ago demolishing what was left of your food supply it's twice as big now as it was then 
"'Well, we've got to get rid of it,' said Jenkins, suddenly coming to life. "'Amen, doctor. I'll get the survey crew alerted right away. We won't waste a minute. And my apologies.' Jenkins was hurrying for the door. "'I'll get it cleared out of here fast.' "'I do hope so,' said the black doctor. "'The thing makes me ill just to think about. I'll give you a clean ship report in twenty-four hours.' the red doctor said as confidently as he could and beat a hasty retreat down the corridor he was wishing fervently that he felt as confident as he sounded the malkivi had described the lord in excruciating detail he and green doctor stone had listened and smiled sadly at each other day after day marvelling at the fanciful delusion lords indeed and such creatures to dream up eating growing devouring plant animal and mineral without discrimination and the Malkivi had stoutly maintained that this lorg of theirs was indestructible. Green Doctor, Wally Stone, true to his surgical calling, was a man of action. "'You mean there's such a thing?' he exploded when his partner confronted him with the news. "'For real? Not just somebody's pipe dream?' "'There is,' says Jenkins. "'And we've got it. Here, on board the Mercy. It's sitting like hell and gone, and doubling its size every eight hours. "'Well, what are you waiting for? Toss it overboard.' And what happens to the next party it happens to land on? We're supposed to be altruists, remember? We're supposed to worry about the health of the galaxy. Jenkins shook his head. Whatever we do with it, we have to find out just what we're tossing before we toss. The creature had made itself at home aboard the Mercy. In the spirit of invited guests since time immemorial, it had established a toehold with remarkable asperity, and was now digging in for the long winter. Drawn to the hydroponic tanks like a flea to a dog, the lorg had settled its bulbous pink body down in their murky depths with a contented gurgle. As it grew large, the tank levels grew lower, the broth clearer. The fact that the twenty-five crewmen of the Mercy depended on those tanks for their food supply, on the fourth month run back to Earth Hospital, didn't seem to bother the lorg a bit. It just sank down wetly and began to eat. Under Jenkins' whip hand, and with the green Dr. Stone's assistance, the survey crew snapped into action. The survey was the soul and lifeblood of the medical services supplied by Hospital Earth to the inhabited planets of the galaxy. Centuries before, during the era of exploration, every Earth ship had carried a rudimentary survey crew. A physiologist, a biochemist, an immunologist, a physician to determine the safety of landings on unknown planets. Other races were more advanced in technological and physical sciences in sales or in merchandising but in the biological sciences men of earth stood unexcelled in the galaxy it was not surprising that their casual offerings of medical services wherever their ships touched had led to a growing demand for those services until the first medical service contract with deneb three had formalized the planetary speciality earth had become the hospital earth physician to a galaxy surgeon to thousand worlds midwife to those susceptible to midwifery and psychiatrist to those whose inner lives zigged when their outer lives zagged in the early days it had been a haphazard arrangement but gradually distinct services appeared to handle problems of medicine surgery radiology psychiatry and all the other functions of a well-appointed medical service under the direction of the black service of pathology hospital ships and survey ships were dispatched to serve as bases for the tiny general practice patrol ships that answered the calls of the planets under contract but it was the survey ships that did the basic dirty work on any new planet taken under contract outlining the physiological and biochemical aspects of the races involved studying their disease patterns their immunological types their susceptibility to medical surgical or psychiatric treatment it was an exacting service to perform, and the survey did an exacting job. Now, with their own home base invaded by a hungry pink jelly blob, the survey crew of the Mercy dug in with all fours to find a way to exercise it. The early returns were not encouraging. Bowman, the anatomist, spent six hours with the creature. He'd go after the functional anatomy first, he thought, as he approached the task with gusto. Special organs, vital organ systems after all every achilles had its heel functional would spot it if anything would six hours later he rendered a preliminary report it consisted of a blank sheet of paper and an expression of wild frustration what's this supposed to mean jenkins asked just what it says 
but it says nothing that is exactly what it means bowman was a thin wistful-looking man with a hawk nose and a little brown mustache he subbed as the ship's cook when things were slow in his specialty he wasn't a very good cook but what could anyone do with a sludge from the harvest shelf of a hydroponic tank now with a lorg incumbent there wasn't even any sludge i drained off a tank and got a good look at it before it crawled over to the next one bowman said ugly bastard but from a strictly atomical standpoint i can't help you a bit green dr stone glowered over jenkins shoulder at the man but surely you can give us something bowman shrugged want it technical any way you like your lorg is an ideal anamorph a nothing protoplasm just protoplasm jenkins looked up sharply what about his cellular organization no cells said bowman unless they're submicroscopic and i'd need an electron peeker to tell you that no organ systems not even an integument you saw how slippery he looked that's why there's nothing holding him in but energy now look said stone he eats doesn't he he must have waste materials of some sort bowman shook his head unhappily sorry no urates no nitrates no co2 anyway he doesn't eat because he has nothing to eat with he absorbs and that includes the lining of the tanks which he seems to like as much as the contents he doesn't bore those holes he makes he dissolves them they sent bowman back to quarters for a hot bath and a shot of happy o and looked up arunta the biochemist arunta was glaring at the paper electrophoretic patterns and pulling out chunks of hair around his bald spot he gave them a snarl and shoved the sheaf of papers into their hands metabolic survey jenkins asked plus said arunta you're not going to like it either why not if it grows it metabolizes if it metabolizes we can kill it axiom number seventeen paragraph number four. Oh, it metabolizes all right but you'd better find yourself another axiom pretty quick why because it not only metabolizes it consumes there's no sign of the usual protein carbohydrate metabolism going on here this baby has an enzyme system that's straight from hell it bypasses the usual metabolic activities that produce heat and energy and gets right down to the basic basic jenkins swallowed what do you mean it attacks the nuclear structure of whatever matter the creature comes in contact with there's a partial mass energy conversion in its rawest form the creature goes after carbon bearing substances first then the sea seems to break down more easily than anything else hence its preference for plant and animal matter material over non-sea stuff but it can use anything if it has to jenkins stared at the little biochemist an image in his mind of the pink creature in the hold growing larger by the minute as it ate its way through the hydrophonics through the dry stores is there anything it can't use if there is i haven't found it arunta said sadly in fact i can't see any reason why it couldn't consume this ship and everything in it right down to the last rivet they walked down to the hold for another look at their uninvited guest and almost wished they hadn't it had reached the size of a small hippopotamus although the resemblance ended there twenty hours had elapsed since the survey had begun the lord had used every minute of it draining the tanks engulfing dry stores devouring walls and floors as it spread out in search of food leaving trails of eroded metal wherever it went it was ugly ugly in its pink shapelessness ugly in its slimy half sentient movements in its very purposefulness but its ugliness went even deeper stirring primordial feelings of revulsion and loathing in their minds as they watched it oozing implacably across the hole to another dry storage bin wally stone shuddered it's grown too fast bowman charts it as geometric progression stone scratched his jaw as a lone pink pseudopod pushed out on the floor toward him then he leaped forward and stamped on it severing the strand from the body the severed member quivered and lay still for a moment then it flowed right back to join the body with a wet girdle stone looked at his half dissolved shoe egotropism jenkins said bowman played around with that too a severed piece will rejoin it if it can if it can't it just takes up independent residence and we have two lorgs what happens to it outside the ship stone wanted to know it falls dormant for several hours then it splits up into thousand independent chunks one of the boys spent half of yesterday out there gathering them up i tell you this thing is equipped to survive so are we 
said green dr stone grimly if we can't outwit this free-flowing gob of obscenity we deserve anything we get let's have a conference they met in the pilot room the black doctor was there so were bowman and harunta chambers the physiologist was glumly clasping and unclasping his hands in a corner the geneticist pincione drew symbols on a scratch pad and stared blankly at the wall jenkins was saying of course these are only preliminary reports but they serve to outline the problem this is not just an annoyance any longer it's a crisis we'd all better understand that the black doctor cut him off with a wave of his hand and glowered at the papers as he read them through minutely as he sat hunched at the desk with the black cowl of his office hanging down from his shoulders he looked like a squat black judge jenkins thought a shadow from the inquisition a passer of spells but there was no medievalism in the black doctor nielsen in fact it was for that reason and only that reason that the black service had come to be the leaders and the whips the executors and directors of all the manifold operations of hospital earth the physicians of the general practice patrol were fledglings newly trained in their specialties inexperienced in the rigorous discipline of medicine that was required of the directors of permanent planetary dispensaries in the heavily populated systems of the galaxy on outlying worlds where little was known in the ways of medicine the temptation was great to substitute faith for knowledge cant for investigation nonsense rituals for hard work but the physicians of the black service were always waiting to jerk wandering neophytes back into the scientific disciplines that made the service of hospital earth so effective the black doctors would not tolerate sloppiness show me the tissue doctor they would say prove to me what you say is so prove that what you did was valid medicine their laboratories were the morgues and autopsy rooms of a thousand planets the temples of truth from which no physician since the days of pasteur and lister could escape for long and retain his position the black doctors were pragmatists the gadflies of hospital earth for this reason it was surprising to hear black dr nielsen saying perhaps we're being too scientific just now when the creature has exhausted our food stores it will look elsewhere for food perhaps we must cut at the tree and not at the root a frontal attack asked jenkins its enzyme system is its vulnerability enzyme systems operate under specific optimum conditions right and every known enzyme system can be inactivated by adverse conditions of one sort or another a physical approach may tell us how in this case meanwhile we'll be on emergency rations and hope that we don't starve to death in finding out the black doctor paused looking at the men around him and in case you're thinking of enlisting help from outside forget it i've sent plague warnings out for galactic relay we have this thing isolated and we're going to keep it that way as long as i command this ship they went gloomily back to their laboratories to plan their frontal attack that was the night that harunda disappeared he was gone when they came to wake him from his sleep period his bunk had been slept in but he wasn't in it in fact he wasn't anywhere on the ship but he just couldn't vanish the black doctor burst out when they told him the news maybe he's hiding somewhere maybe this business was working on his mind green dr stone took a crew of men to search the ship again even though he considered it a waste of precious time he had his private convictions about where harunta had gone so did every other man on the ship including jenkins the lord had stopped eating huge and round wet and ugly it squatted in the afterhold quivering gently without any other sign of life like a fat man after a turkey dinner jenkins reviewed progress with the others no stone had been left unturned they had sliced the lorg and squeezed it they had boiled it and frozen it they had dropped chunks of it in acid vats and covered other chunks with desiccants and alkalis nothing seemed to bother it a cold environment slowed down its activity true but it was also stimulated in the process of fission warmed up again the portions sucked back together again and resumed eating heat was a little more effective but not much it stunned the creature for a brief period but it would not burn it hissed frightfully and gave off an overpowering stench and curled up at the edges but as soon as the heat was turned off again it began to recover in horrenda's lab chunks of the lork sat in a dozen vats on tables and in sinks some contained antibiotics some concentrated acids some desiccants in each vat a blob of pink protoplasm wiggled happily showing no sign of discomfiture 
on another table were the remains of Harunta's unsuccessful attempt to prepare an anti-lorg serum but no Harunta. he was down there with the thing all day bowman said sadly he felt it was his responsibility really Harunta thought biochemistry was the answer to all things of course very conscientious man but he was in bed he claimed he did his best thinking in bed maybe he had a brainstorm and went down to try it out and yes jenkins nodded sourly and he walked down the row of vats you'd think that at least concentrated sulfuric would desiccate it a little but it's just formed a crust of coagulated protein around itself and sits there bowman peered over his shoulder his mustache twitching but it does desiccate if you use enough long enough what about concentrated hydrochloric same thing maybe a little more effective but not enough to count okay next we try combinations there's got to be something the wretched beast can't tolerate there was of course dr stone brought it to jenkins as he was getting ready to turn in for a sleep period jenkins had checked to make sure the double guards were posted in the lord's vicinity and jolted them with sleep knot to keep them on their toes all the same he tied a length of stout cord around his ankle just to make sure he didn't do any sleepwalking he was tying it to the bunk when stone came in with a pan in his hand and a peculiar look on his face look at this he said jenkins looked at the sickly brown mass in the tray and then up at stone where did you find it down in the hold our lord has broken precedent it rejected something that it ate yeah what is it i don't know i'm taking it to nielsen for paraffin sections but i know what it looks like to me hmm, i know jenkins felt sick stone headed up to the path lab leaving the red doctor settled in his bunk ten minutes later jenkins sat bolt upright in the darkness frantically he untied himself and slid into his clothes idiot he growled to himself seventh son of a seventh son five minutes later he was staring at the vats in harunza's laboratory he found the one he was looking for a pink blob of lorg wiggled slowly around the bottom jenkins drew a beaker of distilled water and added it to the fluid in the vat it hissed and sputtered and sent up quantities of acrid steam when the steam had cleared away jenkins peered in eagerly the pink thing in the bottom was turning sickly violet it had quit wiggling as jenkins watched the violet color changed to gray mud then to black he prodded it with a stirring rod there was no response with a whoop jenkins buzzed bowman and stone we've got it he shouted to them when they appeared look at it bowman poked and probed and broke into a wide grin the piece of lorg was truly and sincerely dead it inactivates the enzyme system and renders the base protoplasm vulnerable to anything that normally attacks it what are we waiting for they began tearing the laboratory apart searching for the right bottles the supply was discouragingly small but there was some in stock the three of them raced down the corridor for the hold where the lorg was it took them three hours of angry work to exhaust the supply they whittled chunks off the lorg tossed them in pans of the deadly fluid with each slice they stopped momentarily to watch it turn violet then black as it died the lorg dwindling in size sensed the attack and slapped frantically at their ankles sending out angry plumes of wet jelly but they ducked and dodged and whittled some more the lord quivered and gurgled and whipped pinkish goo all over the floor but it grew smaller and weaker with every whack harunta must have spotted it and come down here alone jenkins panted between slices maybe he slipped lost his footing i don't know they continued to work until the supply was exhausted they had reduced the lord to a quarter of its previous size check the other labs see if they have some more said stone i already have bowman said they don't this is it but we haven't got it all killed there still he pointed to the thing quailing in the corner i know we're licked that's all there isn't any more of the stuff on the ship they stopped and looked at each other then jenkins said oh yes there is there was silence bowman looked at stone and stone looked at bowman they both looked at jenkins oh no sorry i decline stone shook his head slowly but we have to there's no other way the enzyme system is inactivated it's just protoplasm there's no physiological or biochemical reason you know what you can do with your physiology and biochemistry bowman said succinctly you can also count me out he left them and the hatchway clanged after him wally yeah it'll be months before we get back to hospital earth 
we know we can hold it in check until we get there yeah well green dr wally stone sighed greater love hath no man he said wearily we better go tell nielsen i guess black dr turvold nielsen answer was a flat unequivocal no it's monstrous and preposterous i won't stand for it nobody will stand for it but you have the proof in your own hands jenkins said you saw the specimen that the green doctor brought you nielsen hunched back angrily i saw it and your impression of it as a pathologist i fail to see how my impression applies one way or the other doctor sometimes we have to face facts remember all right nielsen seemed to curl up into himself still further the specimen was stomach human stomach human stomach but the only human on this ship that doesn't have a stomach is Hranta, said jenkins so the lord ate him most of him not quite all it threw out one part of him it couldn't eat the part containing a substance that inactivated its enzyme system dilute hydrochloric acid to be specific we used the entire ship supply and cut the lord down to three-quarters size but we need a continuous supply to keep it whittled down until we get home and there's only one good permanent reliable source of dilute hydrochloric acid on this ship the black doctor's face was purple i said no he choked my answer stands the red doctor sighed and turned to green doctor stone all right wally he said from the files of the medical disciplinary board hospital earth i am certain that you can see from the foregoing that a reasonable effort was made by green doctor stone and myself to put the plan in effect peaceably and with full approval of our commander it was our conviction however that the emergency nature of the circumstances required that it be done with or without his approval our subsequent success in containing the lord to at least reasonable and manageable proportions should bear out the wisdom of our decision actually it has not been as bad as one might think it has been necessary to confine the crew to their quarters and to restrain the black doctor forcibly but with liberal use of happio we can occasionally convince ourselves that it is rare beefsteak and the green doctor our pro tem cook has concocted several tasty sauces such as mushroom onion etc we reduce the lord to half its size each day and if thoroughly heated the chunks lie still on the plate for quite some time no physical ill effects have been noted and the period of quarantine is recommended solely to allow the men an adequate period for physiological recovery i have only one further recommendation that the work team from the gray service be recalled at once from their assignment on Mauki four the problem is decidedly not psychiatric and it would be one of the tragedies of the ages if our excellent psychiatric service were to succeed in persuading the Malkivi out of their delusion after all hospital earth cannot afford to jeopardize a contract Samuel B. Jenkins, Physician, Grade 6, Red Service, GPP Ship Lancet, Attached, GSS Mercy, Pro Tem. Signed, Samuel B. Jenkins. End of Contamination Crew